What's up guys? I'm Amanda Nyberg, registered dietitian with a passion for health and wellness. Jumping on today talking all about why I avoid snacking. Um, so I was live, well, I wasn't live, but yesterday I was in my stories and I was showing a really quick and easy lunch option. It was just a bag salad with some ahi tuna. Um, super simple, super inexpensive. My bag salad was on sale for $1.89. Uh, my ahi tuna, I don't know, maybe it was like six, seven bucks. Um, huge salad with tons of nutrients, micronutrients. Um, macronutrients for under, you know, $10. And um, I was showing the caloric intake at 700 calories. And for so many people, that's like, oh my gosh, Amanda, how can that be healthy? 700 calories. Um, and so I did kind of a poll, like, does that feel like a lot to you? Would you feel like that was an unhealthy, you know, salad option? Or does that seem pretty normal for you? And it was a little 50-50, you know? I mean, I feel like half the people that are uh, probably part of my lean program, part of the, part, probably part of the lean community, now have a better understanding of macro management caloric control. Um, and then the other half are still trying to basically starve themselves for success. And, you know, over and over and over, um, we are seeing, especially for women, that under eating does more harm than good. You know, under eating works for us when we're 20, you know, when we're 25, when we're 18, living on Diet Cokes and, you know, whatever. Um, but it ultimately backfires on you as you get older. Um, under eating produces um, less results than adequate eating, okay? So somebody reached out to me and said, Amanda, you know, it seems like you don't really snack that much. And I was like, yeah, I don't really snack that much. And I thought it was just a great topic to jump on and really talk about why snacking is setting you back. Okay. And, and it made me think, yeah, I don't snack a lot, which is probably why, you know, my lunch is 700 calories. Um, when I am in a caloric deficit, when I'm trying to lean out, um, you know, lose, mu lose fat. Okay. I, I never really lose weight, uh, but improve my body composition. My caloric deficit is 1600 calories. Uh, my maintenance caloric intake, which is what I typically eat if I'm not in a deficit, um, is about 2000 to 2200 calories. So for me, a, a lunch of 700 calories is just a drop in the bucket. You know, I've got so much more to work with. Um, yesterday, you know, I had a, a lunch of 700 calories and, you know, I mean, still I, I've got nearly uh, 900 calories to work with for my other meals. And the reason why I think it's important for people to sit down and eat meals is because snacking does not fill you up. It does not keep you full. It does not keep you satisfied. You know, the biggest disservice that ever happened to, um, our, culture, American culture, is six small meals a day, all right? So back in 1977, when the first nutritional guideline was released, uh, which was so problematic, <laughs> that's a whole nother topic, um, we also were given this notion of six small meals a day is the best way to elevate your metabolism. And this was all based on assumption, assumption, okay? There's absolutely zero scientific data to back up six small meals a day promotes weight loss. Um, and the assumption was, is that um, it increases your metabolism. You guys have all heard that, right? You know, when you don't eat, you lower your metabolism, you hit your metabolism. And this assumption was made based on the fact that digestion does increase your metabolism. You know, to digest food um, creates a metabolic bump. But what we didn't know when we implemented the six small meals a day is the endocrine system. We did not have a good understanding of the endocrine system. So what, you know, what happened is, is, is we as Americans, we went from eating three solid square meals a day, you know, back in the seventies, like mom got up and cooked eggs and bacon and pancakes and biscuits. You know, we were having full breakfasts and we were having full lunches and we were having full dinners. And these meals filled us up and kept us full. 
So when this notion of six small meals, like that's the kicker, you know, six small meals a day, what happened is, is now we're not eating, you know, to fullness, okay? And that's why we're hungry two hours later. When I eat a big salad with 700 calories, guess what? I'm not hungry until dinner time. Like that's the key, is that you wanna make sure that you're eating good volume at each, at, at each meal um, in order to keep you satisfied. When we broke it down to kind of six small meals, you know, these smaller meals did not fill us up and keep us satisfied. So. That's one issue, okay, which is why I'm such a proponent of three solid big meals a day, okay? Um, number two, when we look at our eating patterns prior to 1977, we ate breakfast at 8, lunch at noon, dinner at 5.30. There was no snacking, okay? I'm 44 years old. Let me give you my stats. I'm 44. I'm 5'5". Five five, I'm about 140 pounds, you know? Everybody always asks, how tall are you? You know, how old are you? So there you go. There are my stats. Um, and, you know, I remember coming home from high school, asking my mom for a snack. And what would she do? She'd say, no, you're going to ruin your dinner. And we wonder why, you know, our kids don't sit down to chicken and broccoli when an hour ago they just had a bowl of goldfish. Like snacking is ruining, ruining, is that a word? I love to always, you know, make up words. Um, Mealtime, snacking is ruining, ru ruining <laughs> healthy eating, okay? Because we fill up on snacky foods and then we're not hungry for, you know, actual meals. And here's the thing, we don't get a lot of nutritional impact from snacks, okay? Let's be honest. You know, snacks on the go are chips and, you know, kind of unhealthy processed food. This whole industry of snack foods, there's, there's no healthy snack foods out there, okay? I mean, yes, maybe there are healthier snack foods, but, you know, most people are not snacking on carrots. You know, most people are not snacking on cucumbers, you know. Um, most snack category foods are grab and go. They leave us wanting more, okay? It's a vicious cycle. Um, so that's problematic. And so we load up on these nutrient lacking foods and then maybe we're not as hungry for our nutrient dense foods. You know, uh, Americans right now are overfed and undernourished. We have a nourishment issue. We have a micronutrient issue um, where we're not getting enough vitamins and minerals and antioxidants and you know phytochemicals and things like that. And that's why so many of us are struggling with disease and you know um, health issues. You know, yes, it has an issue to do with overconsumption of macronutrients, but it also has to do with the, an underconsumption of micronutrients. So, and I, and I blame sack snacking for that. Um, so when we look at our old eating patterns, you know, we were fasting for 12 to 14 hours, you know, with that kind of first meal at about 738 lunch at 12, dinner at, you know, 5.30. And here's the deal. This is where that insulin response comes in, okay? So what we didn't realize is how much insulin plays a role in our ability to lose weight and store fat, okay? So we know that insulin and cortisol are the number one and number two fat storing hormones in the body. Uh, when our insulin levels are high, we're storing fat, period. I mean, it's very black and white. When our insulin levels are low, we have the ability to be burning fat, okay? Um, so what happened is, is, is prior to 1977, we had an insulin spike at breakfast, but we had enough time for it to recover. And then we would have an insulin spike at lunch, but for enough time, we had it, it was able to recover. And then we had an insulin spike for, for dinner, okay? So we had three spikes throughout the day. Super manageable, okay? Um, obesity was low, heart disease was low, diabetes was low, cancer was low, everything was low, okay? Everything was lower than it is right now. Then we transitioned to the six small meals a day, and now we eat, you know, breakfast at 6 a.m., we have a snack at 9, we have lunch at 12, we have a snack at 3, we have dinner at 6, and we have a snack at 10. So you can see our insulin levels are high all day long. 
Okay, we never give them time to recover. So now we're in this kind of fat storing mode all day long. All right. And that's problematic. You know, many people are hypothesizing. Many people are researching that it is this, you know, six small meals a day and this lack of a 12 to 14 hour fast every night that has led to this rampant increase in obesity, you know, and disease and diabetes and hypertension. All right. So these two simple things that we've lost, not necessarily on what we're eating, but when we're eating has a huge impact, okay? So think about that. Um, so the more that you can get your eating window back to where it used to be, you know, 12 hours, at least eight to eight type of thing, is really the bare minimum in which you should be eating. And the, the, the least amount of times that you can eat in that eating window the better, okay? If you can get back to three solid square meals a day, that is going to improve your health significantly versus nibbling all day long, okay? Nibbling is not serving you. Snacking is not serving you. Um, so the more you can get away from snacking and eating bigger meals less often, the better, okay? The better. So that's one of the reasons why I limit snacking, okay? It's one of the reasons why I implement time-restricted eating, intermittent fasting. You know, I, I'm going to try to fast at least 12 to 16 hours every day, okay? Somewhere between that, minimum 12 every day, okay? Some days I'll make it to 16, some days I'm at 14, but that's my window. And then within my eating window, I'm going to eat three times, all right? Three times. So I'm typically going to do two big meals, okay? And then I'm going to do one kind of medium sized meal because I like to, because my eating window is a little bit shorter, my third meal is not as significant. Okay. Now I could equally space out, you know, my calories, but what I choose to do is equally space out my protein and I don't choose to do it. That's what you should do. Okay. So in your three meal window, you should equally space out your protein, okay? And the more you can space out your macronutrients kind of equally between the three, the better, the better. You know, it's not ideal to kind of, you know, eat like a rabbit for, you know, breakfast and lunch and then eat like a king for dinner, you know? I think the saying goes like, eat like a king for breakfast. I don't know what the other two is, you know, but eat like a pauper for dinner. Um, and, and there is some validity to that, but Ultimately, you know, it's those, it's kind of spacing those three meals. And so somebody's asking, what do you consider your protein shake? I consider that a meal. Okay. Cause it's got 30 grams of protein. It's got about 250 calories. So that's typically, I guess, if you can consider it snacking, you know, that's, that would be my, you know, one snack would be two meals. And then that one smaller meal, which is typically a protein shake or a protein bar simply because I am always looking to optimize my protein. So if you're struggling with weight loss and you're trying to eat six small meals a day, stop, okay? I always found, because I, trust me, I implemented these strategies for years and it, it did not serve me well. I struggled to maintain a healthy weight. My cholesterol was over 300. You know, it's what changed everything, you know, back 12 years ago when I, um, when I, um, you know, had that medical event, that 300 cholesterol, I was like, what the heck? I'm doing everything they told me to do. I'm eating low fat, low calorie. I'm eating six small meals a day. I'm in the gym doing all my cardio and I'm more unhealthy than I ever have been. And so it was a radical shift at that time that led me to where I am now, which is in a much better place, doing pretty much the opposite of what I was doing. So if you're struggling and you're doing that, and so, so what I was trying to say is what I found was, is that the first four meals I could make healthy, but the last two, I was like, I, I don't know what healthy to eat. I'm done. I'm overwhelmed. It's hard to find six healthy things to eat um, every day. Like stop making it so hard. I feel like that's another reason why people fail is because, you know, we make healthy eating so complicated. Like let's get back to the basics. Let's get back to, you know, two or three solid meals, you know, one, you know, solid smaller meal and be done with it. Be done with it. So fill yourself up at each meal time with adequate protein, 
adequate volume, okay? So you want foods that have a lot of volume to them, a lot of water content, i.e. vegetables, um, and healthy fats. You know, fats, proteins, and fibers are what fill you up and keep you full. Fats, proteins, and fibers take four to five hours to digest. So um, they're gonna take you through to your next meal. Carbohydrates and sugars, not so much. That's why, you know, when my clients ask, What's a, what should I snack on? I'm like, okay, well, if you want a snack, which is fine, you know, you've got to have a good source of protein, fats, and fiber at your snack. If you snack on pretzels, it, you're done, okay? You're going to eat a handful, you're going to eat a serving of pretzels, and then 30 minutes later, you're still going to be hungry, okay? Think about it. Pretzels, you put it in your mouth, you suck on it. It melts away. It's not filling you up. It's not keeping you full. There's no protein, very little fiber, no fat, you know, you're doomed, all right? Um, so you've got to make sure that every time you're eating that you're consuming these macronutrients that are going to fill you up and keep you full. Um, and so, you know, somebody's asking about, do you recommend uh, one fruit over the other? Aries are always the best fruits. Strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, raspberries. They are the lowest on the glycemic index. They have the lowest um, insulin response um, in the body. They are the highest in micronutrients, antioxidants, phytochemicals. I mean, look at them. The deeper your colors, the better. But here's the deal. Like if you grab an apple and you eat that, the digestion is going to be very rapid. There's going to be a pretty significant insulin spike. It's probably not going to fill you up, okay? But if you take an apple and you pair it with peanut butter, it's going to help. That reduces the insulin response and it reduces the, your ability to um, stay full longer because you're adding proteins and fats, okay? So... It's all about meal combination, you know, meal timing, you know, stop overthinking it, stop eating 20 times a day, you know it's not serving you well. Um, get back to the basics, you know, focus on whole food nutrition, you know, that's what we're working on. So think about that as you move forward, you know, through the weekend. And, and here's the thing, like we talk about coming up on July 4th, you know, whenever I go to a tailgate, a party, a picnic, you know, whatever, there's food out at all times, okay? Um, and I always say delay the first bite, okay? Because the minute you take that first bite, you're done. You're eating the whole time, the whole time. Um, and so, you know, when you delay that first bite, then um, you go to sit down to a full meal, okay? So on 4th of July, I'm going to wait until, you know, I'm ready to sit down and eat my hamburger and my potato salad and my green beans. And, you know, I'm going to get a full plate of food and I'm going to eat a meal so that I'm not nibbling for six hours. Okay. Again, the difference between sitting down and eating large meals are going to fill you up and keep you full versus having a chip every 15 minutes. Okay. So think about that. I hope you found this helpful. Um, please share this video. I'm going to save it to my Instagram page. If you're watching me on TikTok, please follow my Instagram page for more tips um, to keep you healthy and on track. So I'll save this to my feed. You can share it in your stories, and I really appreciate it. I'll be back for more tips to kind of help you stay on track with your health and wellness. <laughs>